Okay, this time we're going to talk about word boundaries again, but this time I wanted to show you a really practical demonstration of where you would use a word boundary, because knowing that something exists is different from being able to actually use it. So what's happened here is I've got this SP that uh, does a simple insert. So it's just an insert with a list of columns, and you can see there's a lot of columns here, and then a list of parameters that were passed in that I'm going to uh, use to insert right so right now this is the last column that is being uh, used in the insert so you can see down here that this is the last one right there so what I'm doing is I'm adding these columns right here so since I've already added these guys to the select list now I need to add them to the parameter list so if I just highlight these guys and then come all the way down here There we go. So now I've got these. Now I could come in here and I could say there and there and there. And you can see that's going to get really laborious. Now there's 11 of these. Let me control Z a couple times. There we go. There's 11 of these. But what if there were 30 or 70 or 100 of them, right? So this is where regex can really come in handy. Now what I'm looking for, officially in this one, like in anything, right, there are a number of ways that you could do a task. But right now I'm going to show you how to do this with word boundaries. So what I'm looking for is the beginning. I want to put something at the beginning of every one of these words. So I can't really just look for a, I can't really just look for word characters because if I just look for word characters here, let me go here and say look in the selection and if I find, right, I'm going to find all the word characters in here, right? All I want to do is find the beginning of the word. So what I need to do is whack B says the word boundary, right? If you don't remember how word boundaries work in general, go watch the basics. I'll, I'll include it in the bottom of the post here. So this is the word boundary, and it says uh, at the beginning of the word, I want to find all of the letters basically that hit that right so I'm going to be I'm going to be looking for this entire word basically and now I need to capture that entire word so I'm going to put it in parentheses just like that so now I'm looking at the beginning of the word and I'm capturing the word itself and now all I need to do is preface that with a dollar sign one which means use this capture up here right this capture right here I'm gonna use down here so I wanna take the entire word and capture it and then I want to preface it with an at sign so let's go ahead and see how that works out so I'm gonna highlight this I say only in selection I'm gonna replace all and there you go. You can see I have prefaced all of the words with an at symbol. And that's because, again, in my word boundary here, um, I am looking, this word boundary says there is a beginning word boundary, and then I'm looking for the characters, right? I could have just as easily have done something like this by, by looking at the end of the word and putting something at the end of the word by looking for an ending word boundary. Right, so I could have said something like this. I could have said something like that, and then uh, instead of putting something at the beginning, right, I could have pluralized all of them with an S, something like that, or I could have said, uh, you know, put stat at the end of all of the words or something like that. So that's how the word boundaries work. In practicality this is just one simple example but it's a good idea to get used to these kinds of things gradually right so and of course I need to go back and add this variable because I, I didn't add the variable but that's outside of the scope of this and I'm gonna need to format this a little bit but again that's outside the scope of this but anyway that's how you use that's a good practical example of how you would use word boundaries to do real work